Well, hello, hello, and welcome to another lesson of the Focus on Dado CMS course. Actually, the last live lesson of 2021. I can't believe 2021 is pretty much done, and we're heading into 2022. It's crazy to even think about that. Anyway, I'm Marcelo Lewin. I, I'm still Marcelo Lewin, and I will be Marcelo Lewin probably for the next couple of years. You can get a hold of me right there, Marcelo at Headless Creator. Dot com send me an email with questions comments suggestions whatever you have feel free to send me an email i'll get back to you um, today my guest presenter is natalia baeza she's a full stack developer at cantieri creativo uh, and she's going to show us how to use scripts to migrate dado cms content schema you're going to learn all about that so don't worry about it but before we get started you know how this goes i'm going to tell you real quick about headlesscreator.com Go there, uh, register for it. You'll have access not only to this lesson uh, on demand right after we're done today. Uh, usually it takes about an hour and it goes on demand, but you also have access to the entire Focus On course, which gives you access to all of the content in there. And there's tons of content in there, including lots of bonus material, presenter not only by Natalia, but you can see a lot of other great presenters as well. On top of that, the free account gives you access to all other courses, including Content Modeling Weekly, you guys know I'm a huge content modeling geek, so you'll learn a lot about content modeling there, discover headless tech, a lot of focus on courses, uh, a bootcamp course that is actually going on right now on personalization, and another one coming up soon that's going to be on Composable DXP. So stay tuned for that. 2022, I'm going to have a lot of stuff. All right, that's it. That's all the marketing I'm going to do. I'm not going to do any more marketing. But I just want to make sure you guys go get your account. I really appreciate your support. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and restart the intro because for the on-demand version, we won't have any marketing or anything like that. So I will see you in just 10 seconds. Well, hello, hello, and welcome to another lesson of the Focus on Data CMS course. I am Marcelo Loon, the Headless Creator. As always, get a hold of me right there, Marcelo at headlesscreator.com. Send me an email with questions, comments, ideas for the future. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, today, my guest presenter is Natalia Baeza. She's a full stack developer at Cantieri Creativo, and she's going to show us how to use scripts to migrate Dado CMS content schema. You'll learn all about that. You're going to see code. It'll be really cool. But first, we're going to learn a little bit more about her, and I'm going to bring her in. Natalia, let me unmute you here. There we go. Oh, <laughs> we both did it. No problem. Natalia, welcome. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm glad to have you here. So um, you're in Italy now, right? Yes. Okay. Now, but you're originally from Colombia. Yes. Right. Okay. So we're the United Nations here because I'm originally from Argentina, but I'm in the U.S. So I love this. The internet. I also lived most of my life in the U.S. So. Did you really? Oh, I, I didn't know that. See, we've been talking for a little while. I had no clue. <laughs> Whereabouts? I mean, what state? Uh, so I did um, college in Alabama, then I moved to Boston, then I, I did my PhD at Notre Dame, so South Bend. Amazing, amazing. Yeah. My wife is from Boston, actually, so cool. yeah, Lovely. but I've always been a West Coast guy, so <laughs> anyway, uh, glad to have you here. Uh, real quick, uh, give us a little bit about your background. You're a, a full stack developer. How did you get into development? Um, so I actually... Um, so I mentioned I did a PhD. It was in philosophy, actually. So I did very different things. But yeah. I, <laughs> I was always very interested in the philosophy of mathematics and logic and things like that. And then a couple of years ago, a friend introduced me to coding, started doing some coding challenges, and just loved it. So I did a boot camp, and uh, here I am. <laughs> so you're a full stack developer. Do you prefer front end or, or back end development, or does it matter to you? Uh, I really enjoy both. Every time I'm mostly doing one, I think that's it. I'm most of a back-end person, and then I do some front-end, and I'm like, oh, no, no, I love <laughs> So I really like it all. So you like the variety. Yeah. 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 Cool. Any, any tips for anybody that wants to get into development that you would say, hey, do this or don't do this, that you learned uh, along the way? 
I don't know. You really have to try and look at what's out there and see what works for you. The main thing is don't be scared to get into it, even if you have never coded anything, um, because there are lots of resources. And, um, and it's a jump that you really can make. And of course, and, um, an area that is growing incredibly fast. And so there are lots of opportunities oh, yeah. and things to do. It's, yeah, uh, really I mean, fun. programmers are highly needed for mm -hmm. every aspect of society now, right? Yeah, definitely, so. definitely. Very cool. All right, so I usually <laughs> end my uh, interviews with something personal. Uh, everybody knows I'm a movie buff. Um, do you have a favorite movie? Or I can ask you, what's your favorite dish? Your food, because I like I like food too. So, <laughs> uh, well, we were talking about movies before. So, let's so do let's a movie. do a movie. I was What's that your I favorite movie? I haven't watched movies in a long time. My uh, favorite movie, but I haven't seen it in many years. Used to be The Seventh Seal. You know it? Okay, I no, I, I don't. I haven't seen it. It's it's really great. Um, but recently, so the most recent movie I watched, I was saying before, is Don't Look Up. I watched it uh, last night, and I found it really interesting. It made yeah. me think a lot. So. It's it's I, I watched it as well. I think it's available on Netflix. I think it is. Yes. And exactly. uh, I enjoyed it. I thought it had some good laughs. Um, it had a message, obviously, as well. And um, so overall, I think, what do you give it between one and five? Five uh, being the best. Oh, well, it depends on what what we're rating it about. No, like enjoyment five, overall. But I think enjoyment overall four. OK, and I think it's also um, it makes you think about lots of things that are of course. right now. Yep. So because that's, of that message. That's yep. It's, yeah. yep. I give it about a 3.8, so we're pretty close. All right. <laughs> but you know what? People didn't come here to talk about to listen about movies, or maybe they did. I don't know. Maybe I'll get a lot more people if uh, we just talk about <laughs> movies. But we're going to get started. I'm showing your screen, so we're all set. If, it, if any of you have any questions, and I see some comments already, if any of you have any questions, please feel free to type them in the chat. I will ask Natalia during the presentation. Natalia, if I have questions, I'll jump in. But otherwise, it's all yours. Um, OK, great. So um, before I get into um, migrations and how to write migration scripts, I wanted to talk a little bit about environment, because migrations, we use migrations to create and modify data environments. So, um, an environment has uh, all the models, records, uploads, plugins, um, SEO settings, etc., that you have in your project. And every uh, data project has a primary environment. And that's where um, all the regular editorial workflow happens, so where contents are added, and so on. And then you can create um, as many sandbox environments as you want. A sandbox environment always starts out as a fork of the primary environment. That means as an exact copy of it. Um, and then you can use it to do all your testing development. Um, you can think of it kind of like a, a Git branch. So if we go here, this is a Dado project, the project I'm going to be using today. You can see here the primary environment. And if I go to settings, environments, um, you can see here, this is uh, another environment I created for this project, but you see the primary, you can fork it, um, then you just give it a name, um, any name that you want, create environment, um, and there it is. We have a copy, and then we can use this to do all your testing. And to switch environments, you just go up here, and you can see all the environments in your project, and you just click into the one you want to go to. And there it is. Um, and real quick, just to clarify for people as well, um, is um, projects. So here we have in, uh, environments, but uh, uh, one further out is projects, right? So you have Dado CMS projects and then environments are within projects. Just so people exactly. understand that if you have a separate project, environments are within a project. Are within a project, yes. Right, so. just to make sure we're clear on that. Okay, thank you. And then you can set the endpoint in your in your project, in your code. Um, the docs tell you exactly how to do that. And you just pass an environment variable and you can read for whatever environment you want to, um, to work with. If you don't pass anything, you'll be with the primary environment. If you pass the name of a different environment that you can read the data from that environment and use that to do testing and, and development. And 
Um, this is just again to get more context before we get into coding. This is what the recommended workflow is for uh, <clears throat> using migration scripts to modify your backend, so your environment and data. And the idea is when you begin, you have your main environment, whatever it's called, and that is the primary environment for your project. So that's what's in production. Um, then you can fork it as we did just a second ago and you get an exact copy of it, a sandbox environment, and you can use that to do development. Um, they like Dado suggests in, in the docs, it is strongly suggested that um, you use only migration scripts to modify your sandbox environment. Okay. Um, and that's so that we can then run those scripts to create a new environment that would become the primary. Anyways, you do all your uh, testing and development here, all the new features you want to add. When you're ready to merge, this is the flow to follow. You put data in maintenance mode, and you can see here, if we go again to settings, environment, you can um, put data in maintenance mode just by clicking here or from the command line too. Quick and question. that just stops and it, yeah. When you uh, fork the environment, not only do you get the content schema, but you're getting all the content as well, right? That's in yes, yes production. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. You're and then you can everything. mess around with that content and it doesn't affect production. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. You can do anything you want and it won't. Um, and, and that's why it is really useful. So you can always environments, I mean, sandbox environments, you can delete them, you can change them, you can make mistakes, it's not going to affect right. anything that's in production. But it's um, important to bring in that content because you need some content to test anyway. Yes, 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 yes. Perfect. Um, but, but by the time you're ready to merge, maybe there is new content that has been added to your primary environment and you want to bring that too. So what we do is we put, um, data in maintenance mode and that stops anybody from adding content um, to 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 data right um, then you rerun your scripts the scripts create a completely new sandbox environment that starts out as a copy of the primary and that then um, is modified in accordance to your scripts so then you have a new sandbox environment that has everything that was on the primary plus the changes you want to incorporate. At this point, you can deploy your app or your website um, pointing to this newly created sandbox environment. So you can test everything, make sure that it works, that it's exactly what you want. And at that point, you can promote your environment. And again, you can do that uh, here. There is this button, or you can do it from the command line. And when you promote, your newly created environment, it will just turn that environment into the primary environment. And at this point, we can turn maintenance mode off and ta-da, we've uh, switched to a new environment. Also, that means that you have a new primary environment, but your old environment is still there. It has just been demoted to a sandbox. But if you have any problem and you want to go back to what you had before, it's still there. You just promote it and you're back where you were before. So. It's Quick really question on the oh, maintenance right. mode. Um, when you turn on maintenance mode, mm -hmm. is that mode accessible via the API? So your front end, let's say your website, when you turn on maintenance mode on <laughs> Dado CMS, will know, hey, it's a maintenance mode, and maybe you don't want to show the website. Maybe you want to show a temporary, we're bringing you new features or something like that. Is that available? Do you know that that um, through the API, knowing that it is website. a maintenance I mean, mode? Usually website what what it will do is, is it will just stop anyone from making changes to the primary but your website should be still be fine like the last thing that you had just before turning into maintenance mode it's mostly to stop for example people from inserting new content got it okay yeah. makes sense okay so we're going to focus now on this step here uh how to write migration scripts to modify your environment so let's go over here Okay, and so how do you get started? First thing you need to do is to install the Dado client. I've already done it, so I'm not going to do it again, but here on the docs you have um, exactly how to do it. It's really easy, just one command, npm or yarn, whatever you use. And then you have to set up the API token, um, which is the full access token that you have on your project. You get it from here. You just go to API tokens. 
and the full access API token, and you'll use that as the doc the docs tell you to, and then then you'll be ready to to start um, running my running migrations. Yeah. So the project we're going to look at that I'm going to use to demonstrate uh, today is this. It's just um, a blog. It just has uh, blog posts and authors, and I'm going to concentrate on the author model. Um, the author model has just these two very simple elements. It has a name, a line, um, a string field for a name, and um, an asset field with a picture. And uh, if we see content authors here, yeah. So it's just like this, very simple. And after we have done our scripts, the final point we want to get to is this. So we're going to add a modular block field here that will have two, two options, um, avatar and contact. We'll also pre-fill one of them, this one. So let me see if I can show you another one that's empty. Yeah, so we are going to add this field to the author model and then so that one can add a contact, which will just be an email field or a picture. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. Uh, let's see. And I wanted to show you, um, the docs are really, really great. They have all the information you need. Um, this is um, in the docs for the data management API. It, 